what are the top five most common Cantonese stereotypes that might make them a little different than other groups of Chinese people? We're here to talk about it. David. Yeah, we're going to break it down. Joining us today, we've got Kiki Yurng. Hello, Kitty. What is it, Yurng KK? Yurng KK. Oh, very good. And then we've got Nelson Chan. Or Nelly. Nelly Chan. I didn't know about Ooh, the rebrand. Yeah. No, no please say your Chinese name. Ta, uh, I don't have a Chinese name. What do you mean? Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> My Chinese name is uh, Chen Guanxing. Chen Guanxing. Like Chen Guanhei. You're, this is the new Chen Guanhei. Chen Guanxing. Okay, listen. Basically, we have a Cantonese panel here, all right? Yep. So we're all Cantonese in some way, and we're here to talk about what kind of might make Cantonese people a little bit different as far as stereotypes wise than other groups of Chinese? David, why are we talking about it before well, we get Well, I think on our channel, we break down a lot of macro things, bird's eye view, you know, top down macro stuff about the Asian community, you know, East Asian, Southeast Asian, uh, Daisy. But we're going to get hyper granular, Andrew, to a group that you would only know this depth of knowledge about if you were part Canto yourself if not full. Oh, so if you guys are ready, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Bob Boys. Check out Small Lost Sauce at smalllostsauce.com. Uh, Canto people love the sauce. And but the anyways. reason we brought Kiki in is because Kiki, I would say in America right now, within the American fishbowl environment, you are the most Cantonese comedian out there. By far. In America. Really? Even more than Jimmy Oh yeah. No, he's actually Shanghainese. You know what, Kiki? Oh, really? We're going to play some, some clips. He's it's, it's Shanghainese the, from Hong Kong. Taking the oh. title. Play some clips of Kiki yeah. being Cantonese on stage. Oh my God, my mom uh, taught me really good habits. Yeah, yeah. She, 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 she's like, Kiki, do not touch yourself. <laughs> if you touch yourself, you will get sick and die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's like, do you want to get sick and die, Kiki? I'm like, no, mom. I don't want to get sick and die. I didn't know my fingers were that powerful. Don't <laughs> weed for me. You know, I don't need it. I'm high on life. I drink hot water. I'm actually 150 years old. Yeah, you know Asians. Yeah, hell yeah. Asian hot water crew right there. I saw two more back there. I don't know, you guys. Not with all Asians, though. So you might like ice water. <laughs> Boom. So, I mean, I think that this immediately gets into the granularity of it. For example, I have a cousin from Hong Kong, but his, he's full Shandong. You know what I mean? Like, he looks Korean, but he just, like, is from Hong Kong. So it's like, that's not as Canto as somebody who's... Cantonese blood from Hong Kong. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's just get into it, man, because uh, obviously I, we, we know that uh, Fung, Cantonese name, F U N G, that's the Cantonese spelling, although the character obviously is spelled different ways uh, depending on what part of China or Asia, Asia you're from, yeah. actually. So, David, what's number one, man? Number one, Cantonese people are known for their love of food and their ability to cook a wide variety of dishes. Also, on the maybe on the stereotypical side, known to eat literally everything. Yeah, <laughs> feed. Oh, brains! I grew up eating cow and pig brains. My mom fried it with the egg. Chao dan, low chao dan, so good. Wait, you need a brain cow omelet brains with the eggs? Uh, yeah, so good. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, no, I hadn't heard of that. Did you have this uh, the <laughs> stir fried cow brains? With not, the not eggs? with the brain. No, no, not with the brain. What, what oh. No, but so like uh, my my Cantonese people back home, they eat it with like the uh, little larvas. You know those little insects, the fried eggs with the insects. This is back in the village in Guangdong. This is yeah in Guangdong, yeah. Okay, yeah, man, that's, yeah. That's crazy. yeah, no, Cantos. Uh, so what's the old saying, David, about Cantos? Uh, what is it that anything with they would eat anything with four legs and back faces the sky that's not a table or a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but honestly, okay. like, I'm just going to address it just, you know, because we we keeping it uh, on a good side yeah. and a bad side right now. Some people said in Guangdong they used to uh, eat monkey brains. Right. Okay, all right, all right. So, so uh, we started off with some negativity, but I got to no. say, <laughs> Canto food is considered Cantonese. The larger umbrella of what is considered Cantonese food is considered some of the best food in the world. With that being said, a lot of people do say this, but actually one thing I do want to note is that Cantonese food kind of encompasses a lot of other influences like chiu chow food, there's toy san, haka. there's haka, there's like southern, general southern influences that get kind of uh, combined together at a Cantonese restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cantonese people love making soups, bo tong. Yeah, oh, bo tong, I love it. 
Kiki, Gai tell us about some of the soups that you ate. Oh, like hakai, black chicken, hakai, dan tong, and then. Sayang, choy tong. Oh, that's good too. Uh, uh, they like pork bone. Yeah. Like, uh, chu kuat. Chu kuat tong. Yo, one of the things that our dad loves to do is make this uh, gai tong with like the little goji berries oh, and yep. the ginseng yep, and it. the dates. You know, it's yeah. like slightly sweet, kind of bitter, but it tastes really yeah. good. Yeah, Makes it in the crock pot. Yeah. What about uh, the Hong Kong fusion soups with like the British Russian lo song tong, the borscht? Oh, that's good. Mm. Uh, also, uh, f- is it that uh, fish mall soup? You think that's Cantonese? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that probably is probably Kanto. Yeah. It's not a collagen for your face. I remember uh, on Sunday I morning, my dad would spend like five, six hours botong. Making oh, soups, you, have, you have to do it the whole day. Yo, this yeah. winter melon the soup. Day. The winter Dong melon gua. soup with the pork. Dong gua tong. Oh, Dong gua chu gua tong. Super yeah. slept on. Guys, at Cantonese restaurants, uh, like the high-end ones, you can order like those little small servings of soup yeah. out of the yeah. steamer. Yeah. And they come Dong in those like little like six ounce, like, little like eight pot. ounces. It's like a little pot. A yeah. phoenix. It's called Dong. A phoenix, phoenix in San yeah. Gabriel, or Al- they have the Phone goji like, berry with the uh, dates with the. David, what else about the food? Um, light and subtle flavors. Yes. Cantonese cooking does not use many spices, which is the reason why Cantonese cuisine has light and subtle flavors. Yeah, ho ting, we like like light. You know, easily good for your skin. Yeah. Nothing too fried, too spicy. Yeah, nothing, nothing too yeah. too salty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, honestly, yeah. like. The, Yes, as far as like red and green peppers, like there's not a lot of that. You know what I mean? I have never, ever in my entire life gotten an upset stomach or diarrhea from eating Kanto food. Oh, oh ever. that's true. Ever. ever. But I'm yeah. saying, hey, listen, I like Sichuan food. Forever. I probably, ever. I might have had di- diarrhea 30 oh, times. Right 30, away. Immediately. 30 times from eating Sichuan food. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. No, Sichuan food, a lot of, a lot of that uh, hot like red volcano. oil is true. <laughs> but I will say this. So on the flip side, although I think Cantonese food is delicious and palpable for almost anybody, there is a lot of people out there who would say that Cantonese food, they've described it as bland because it's very light in flavor, especially Hong Kong cafe food, which is uh, its own breed of Cantonese food. Kiki, can you speak so on it? It's good though, like the Spam and Egg Sandwich. Yeah. And then you cut the, the, the sides, you know, and, it's, and then like you, you were talking about the macaroni soup with a little bit of peas yeah, and if, carrots if you're like looking oh for man. something that like hits you hardcore with the spices and flavor profiles it's not probably going to be canto food but i guess us being canto you don't need that to eat yeah. the food right like yeah. you don't no because cantonese cantonese people like uh to eat breakfast a lot so yeah. you know they have a lot of you know clean healthier you know light right. breakfast yeah. options yeah. it's so almost like everything eat, like, is like yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah everything's kind of like dim sum it's every, it's uh, you can almost eat it all for brunch you know at dim sum restaurants even though it's like 1 p.m you can literally order everything yeah like they're all right, like all right, do you dance, what, when you guys go get dim sum do you uh, get the uh latu yao and the co or no, nothing i don't but my husband does because he's like americanized and he, yeah yeah i don't i don't i don't do i have to admit when i was younger i never would get the extra sauces but maybe it's because i've eaten so much other foods yeah. like sichuan or korean that i need i need you to need sometimes some of that spice get, yeah i need some of it now. Yo, first of all Smala. i do wanna, i use small <laughs> Cantos, dim sum, got the best chicken feet. I've had chicken feet from other ethnic, ethnicities, cuisines, and I got to say the one at dim sum that is fried, marinated, then steamed with the black bean and a little bit of like sweetness from the red barbecue sauce, that one's the best one. Cantos no, got the best chicken feet. Cantos got the best chicken feet. I'm not I, saying hey, everything. I would stand on it. I think the no sauce white one is slept on too, though. I, it's with cool. The, with the red vinegar? I know what I you're know. talking about. I know. I just can't do the white chicken feet. What do you think, feet. white chicken feet? It. No, you know it's cold. It feels, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it looks like a real red. feet in front of my face. That's funny. <laughs> Can't uh, do it. Number two, number two point about Cantonese cuisine: seafood is quite prominent on Cantonese cuisine because the Guangdong region of China is located near the coast. Obviously, yeah. Hong Kong, Sing Macau. You. You, you're from Macau. You're from Hong Kong. A lot of fish. Yeah, Jing Yu. Oh, we love Jing Yu. My dad loves. Fish, I eat that. Bro. What about abalones? Do you value oh, abalones? Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Scallops. Oh yeah, yeah. I grew up eating a lot. My dad. All right, so Get would you through. guys say that for protein wise, seafood is your favorite, or you did you because take pork, chicken, or beef? I like chicken the most, like guai fei gai, you know, like the steamed yeah. chicken. Guai fei gai with gong chong. Canto- yeah, yeah. gong chong. Gong yeah. Now, would you go on with? Yeah, I'm more of a guy person. I, I'm a guy person too, but I'm going to say hoi sin seafood is right close number two. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but they, yeah, seafood. But yeah. it's expensive in America, though. Yeah. Mm. It, it is. Yeah. Like, it's always like, like a, double price. Zing, zing, uh, those shrimp. 
you know, the shrimp with the garlic and the the tong. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the fun si. So yeah. Oh, the fun si. What about the mantis shrimp? Fire. 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 Yeah. Fire. What Fire. about the mantis shrimp? Guys, I think Cantonese cooking uses like all the different styles of cooking: steaming, frying, yeah. braising, boiling. Uh, stir fry everything. Cantos use it all, but, but mostly steaming though. Like they steaming make. is the thing that makes Canto food the most unique. Yes, yes, I agree that Cantos may steam more than other people. I yes. think Cantos might steam more than any other culture. Yeah, because it brings out the natural flavor, and then we use ginger and garlic. You know, like natural yeah. stuff, not just relying on the spice. And rice stuff. is the staple food because the Guangdong region is very suitable for growing rice climate wise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guys, we all know like in the north of China, they do eat rice, but they also eat noodles a lot more. Like so in the south, especially like between anywhere from like Thailand up to probably the middle part of China. Right. Like rice is like pretty much the staple. So there's this saying in uh, mainland China that says uh, should you be so lucky to be born in Suzhou, live and find a wife in Hangzhou, eat in Guangzhou, and <laughs> die in Liuzhou? And I had to look up Liuzhou. Liuzhou, I guess, has really good wood for, like, coffins. Because <laughs> you, you know, like, these Chinese sayings, they're trying to, like, right. say something about the different regions, yeah. right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, they said eat in, eat in Guangdong. Oh. Guangdong got hella good food. Yo. Hey, they did say find a wife in Hangzhou, though. Don't get the Guangzhou <laughs> wife. Hey, Hangzhou <laughs> ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Gong Xiu, Gong Xiu. Oh, Hong Kong, go go find a wife in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. hell no. <laughs> hell no, I know. Oh gosh, such a big Shit. reaction. Why hell no? Uh, they reject you. This is a different video. Nah. Do we guys okay. stereotypes of HK women? Oh, geez. oh. Uh, no, Gong Zhu Bang. Gong Zhu Bang. 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 I'm Bang. a princess, but I, I have my limits to how princess. Uh, Hong Kong women. I just are. think you could get a better deal than a. I ain't than looking a, for a princess. I'm looking HK for a lady. queen. I don't know. Queen, yeah. 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 Anyways, point number two about Cantonese, David. What is the second stereotype of Cantonese people? Uh, Cantonese people are often thought as hardworking, business-minded, mercantile, and willing to travel to faraway places to ha for commerce. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I would say Cantonese people, if we're encompassing essentially Southern Chinese, they've been leaving China to go everywhere in the world for centuries like we're talking about when i say centuries i mean like two three hundred years ago going to southeast asia okay even a hundred years ago going to latin america panama the caribbean america yeah. the western world like yeah. southern chinese have been leaving southern china for centuries a to work anywhere from fujian to taozhou to guangdong to i would say those three regions. poison hakka people they are some of the first Chinese in why, why all these do, parts why of the world. Why do Cantos love going abroad so much to move there, build their life, and build their business? I feel like they like the challenge. They, they're like extroverts. I feel like they're, they're fearless. Like my, my dad started his business in Hong Kong, and then we immigrated to Seattle, and then he built another Did, business. And you're, you said your grandparents are from Taozhou originally? Taozhou, yeah. My, my grandparents were from Taozhou. So and then they moved to Guangdong. Then they moved to Hong Kong. yeah. Something like that. They moved to Hong Kong, and then, yeah, my dad. He he, his parents died when he was young. So, but he started. He was the licensee for Walt Disney in Hong Kong. Uh, he had like twenty wow. something stores. So he was like, he wants to be like, you know, like yeah. the business big, man. big time. Yeah, he that's that's swinging for home yeah. runs. David, yep. you remember what Dad would always say about Gong Zhao? Though he'd always say, "Yo," he's like, "Guys, you have to remember the Cantonese region." is the wealthiest region because they were a big port for all the trading and the merchants for so long. That's why Gong Zhao is so well built. <laughs> and he'd always make a, remind us that, that there was a uh, Cantos always did really good business. I will say this on the negative side, David, there's a negative perspective on this. Oh, I guess that uh, Cantonese people are maybe a little mercenary with their loyalties, I guess. Or like, mm. you know, they just go where, where the money is. Right. Like Cantos, I think the stereotype is partially that Cantos or Southern Chinese are merchants and may possibly value business over nationalism in the country. It's probably true on a probability ah. scale. But no, uh, <laughs> you're, you said your parents went through a huge risk to swim to Macau, right? Yeah. Wow, so tell yeah. us the story of how your parents took the risk. Man, I, when they were like teenagers, they just like snuck to Macau illegally. And then what, they yeah. swam or they got a boat or what? Uh, they got a boat. Okay. Yeah. That would have been crazy if yeah. they swam. But yeah. But they, the boat could have overturned though too. So I think my dad probably swam a portion of it just to get 
you know, get to get to the end of it. Right, you know? right. Because uh, he was a good swimmer. So <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, Leander, to your point, they have this saying in China, Beijing love the nation, Shanghainese will deal the nation, and the Cantonese sold the nation. Oh! <laughs> oh. But that's, it depends on how you hey, perceive that's, it, That's man. the business you know, aspect hey, of man, it. Hey, man, listen, man, in this life, the only thing... Cantos love the teen. <laughs> teen. Teen, 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 teen. Um, point number three, they are known for get it by done by any means pragmatism, but and also some people say like some crudeness. Oh, of Cantonese. So you're saying, explain this by get it done by any means, like get their work done by any yeah, means? Yeah, just get it done. But it's not like uh, caught up. You know how like Japanese people, they're so like about the process and the niceties and the- Oh yeah, we're not. I had to learn to not be like that because I produce so many shows. It's just like, get it done. Get You know, it's it's almost like- so you said you had, you had to, you said, person. You said you had to learn to not be like that yes, and value the person more? Because I learned that from my dad. He just like, hurry up. Like, no brain stupid, okay? And so I become like that. Like, I'm like, this is the way to do business. This is the way to get things done. And you're saying that it's pe not people in the Western world were offended by it? Yeah. I was like, especially from a woman, an Asian. Wow, were you cursing people like fight here? Yeah, in my brain, I'm gonna fight like a madman, and I'm gonna fight like a So that's in my brain. I have to be like, it's okay. They're they're just slow. We're in America. They just need more <laughs> cuddling or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nell, what do you think about the 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 get it done? I, I call it ATVness. Like, you know, like an all-terrain vehicle? Okay. Like ATV, it doesn't matter if it's a mountain, a flat road, a bumpy road, a downhill, uphill. An ATV will get it done, but it ain't necessarily the smoothest no, yeah, yeah, ride. Yeah. Like, it's going to be a little boom, 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 boom. No, it, whereas, dad, like, you know, Japanese, it's all about make it smooth. Finesse. Like, yeah, yeah. My dad is, like, always, like, you know, just get it done. doesn't matter, like, how, you don't have to give it 100% as long, you know. As long as you get it done. Yeah. Right. As long as the watch gears yeah. turn. Yeah. It's like, let's say if he's like, you know, building something, like, you know, we got to, you don't got to make the house a 10 out of 10. You just got to build the house. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I, you know what I always say? And I know there are a lot of people going to see it this way or that way. It's just pros and cons given the situation that you go into with that yeah. mentality. That's cool that you have that mentality. My dad is like, do it, do it 100. 50% or you're stupid. Nah, my dad, like, my oh, dad half ass. Horrible. Really? That's <laughs> yeah. nice that he he's like, he's like, dollar. Talk, 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 talk. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Is there a crudeness? Yeah, there, there's pros and cons to it too. Cause yeah. you know, you want it, if you want it to be like done really nicely, he ain't going to do it. You know, he's just going to give you 70%, but he get it done though. If you, if you build in nice. Wafeng, you need to be Tom Dahl. But if you're yeah. building a, a, a Omakase, you need yeah, to be exactly. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Like, he, he's a Wafong type of guy. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, moving on, point number four. And of course, like we said, guys, there's always a variance in every culture. We're just talking about the overarching stereotypes or where the perception goes. Yeah. Point number four, common Cantonese stereotypes. Superstitious. Uh -huh. Andrew, they cannot use the number four because what? What does four sound like? Sounds like death, right? Say. Right. And then feng shui. <laughs> Feng shui. feng shui. And they deeply believe in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. You're saying Cantonese, you think, believe in TCM even more than other regions of China? Is that, is that the stereotype, right? Yes. Yeah, I they, think... They, they, by the way, all regions do. We're just talking about, like, extremity of belief. In, sure, sure, you know. sure. I think... But what do you... Uh, can we just confirm here with the Super Canto panel? Yeah. What do you yes. think about the number four? Oh, say it. It's not good. Yeah. It's say Never. It's very Never. You, you know, you know, you know the, uh, the elevators in, uh, in China, they don't have the number four in yeah. any of the floors. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. how superstitious they are. <laughs> yeah, okay. and, you, and you know how you avoid all the superstition, guys? You just don't speak Chinese. You just don't <laughs> understand Chinese, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Feng shui was yeah. your... Was My your, mom was my very mom. into feng shui yeah. with her little thing. It's always the moms. Time. It's always the moms. Yeah, feng shui. TCM. Uh, <laughs> What is TCM? Traditional Chinese medicine, like oh, making yeah. a soup for oh, this. Oh yeah! Oh, that's all. That's I do. all they believe. I don't go to the doctor. They, hey, they don't I, believe in Western medicine, bro. I, I, I don't. I just, I just take take soup whenever I feel sick. Take soup, bam! I feel better. Yeah. Or oh, I do nah. gao, acupuncture. <laughs> it's like, gao. It's like oh. you tired, yum tao. Yeah. You sick, yum tao. Uh, they <laughs> see folk, yum tao. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, I, I, I've done, what, what is everybody's view on acupuncture, Andrew? I believe you recently got it done. I got acupuncture done. It's great. It, you sleep so deep after yeah. you do it. I, I think you got to go to the right place, though. Yeah, you got to go true. find the right Don't acupuncture some, expert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, yeah no, really acupuncture? Helps. I've never done it. Cupping? What? Cupping, I have, yes. You haven't done acupuncture? Gua Sha. 
Gua Sha is good. I do gua that sha, for yeah, my face too good. now. The Gua Sha. That's such a phenomenon it, on IG. All the white people just yeah, showing you. I'm like, do you really need to just use your fingers? You know. Hey, but, I, I someone did give me a face roller, and I've been using it. A well, jade one, right? Good. No, yeah, they yeah, give you yeah, a jade, yeah, a rock one. Yeah, my homie does that like every every. I don't know. It feels good. I'm not listen. Generally, you listen to your body. If it feels good and it doesn't mess you up, then you would you guys think? Of, what do you think about Gwyneth Paltrow on Goop saying that oh, yeah. an ancient Chinese secret was to put the jade eggs inside of the hoo ha? She's just saying that so she could sell those eggs for five hundred dollars a pop, right? Yeah, I've never had one, but I'll try it if it's good. <laughs> what does it do? Is it a kegel? Are you doing Supposed the kegel? Yeah, I yeah. was. I was like, man, there's probably other ways to maintain the but pH is it balance. Jade? Yeah, it jade. was jade. She's just making up. Apparently, Gwyneth Paltrow just inventing her own ancient. Wait, TCM. do we have a theory on why we think Cantonese people are so superstitious? Uh, I guess why, like because they believe in guai and spirits. Uh, so people. they believe in spirits more, but why? Because they've seen it. Do you think they're further from the? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've they've seen seen it. Like, I don't know. I feel like they've seen it. You've seen okay. the zombie Yeah, go see yeah, and the spirit. I feel like they're very spiritual <laughs> people too, though. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they hold on to those things a little bit more. Think yeah, it. maybe because they're further from the cultural I think, revolution. I, I also I think know. Guangdong is kind of a starting to be a transition region between East Asia and Southeast Asia. Yeah, too. yeah, I think so. Do you guys agree with this? A side point that uh, Canton or the Cantonese region, you know, Guangdong, it, it kind of feels like it, it is a transition point between the Chinese and like South in Vietnam, for example. I mean, it is technically it's the border part. That's that. No, true, true Cantonese don't like to say. Yeah, that, that's though. true. All right, <laughs> moving on, guys. Point number five: other idiosyncrasies. The odd tendency to wear sandals and flip flops for all seasons. I do love sandals and flip flops, but I think men. That's for men, right? Your da- hey, your dad though, right? Yeah, your dad be got. Nah, nah, no, no, he doesn't. He's not no? with the flip flops. Nah, nah, well, you know why you could wear flip flops? What part of like, yeah, like, yeah, mainland, like the, yes. mainland, yes, mainland, yes. yes in Hong Kong, Macau, not. Hong Kong, nah, no, bro. we're styling like sneakers. Mm. And, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. But, mainland, but, yeah, mainland is flip flops all day. But yeah. given the climate of the South. It would mean that a lot of people, you can wear sandals like in Hong Kong because it's like very warm, humid. You just let your toes hang out there, right? Yeah, but we swagging over there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. Macau, I think they HK, like Macau, HK. Hong Kong. That's true. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. That was like the first like nice suits in China. Yeah. They're from they Hong Kong. They love Nikes, Adidas, Pumas. In Wong, Hong Kong. Wong Kong got all Anything the sneaker stores. Um, all right, I got the side. I got the side one, guys. Why does it seem like there's so many Cantonese hype beasts? Like well, Hypebeast comes from sneakers. Hypebeast.com comes from they, oh. Cantonese love sneakers. Oh yeah. Hypebeast.com is based out of Hong Kong. Oh, really? Like there's so many Nike stores in Hong Kong. And you know, you ever seen like the the couples of the girls and the girl girl yeah. couples? They they always all decked out in Nike. Oh, know? the girl oh, yeah, girl the couples be the most yeah. hypebeast. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why do you think my friend they buy it and then they they they, they, they resell, resell and make right. so much money, but they do love it. They said that Canto people like to eat out two out of the three meals of a day. Oh hell they, yeah! They love to eat out. Oh, well, I eat me. out all the time. I <laughs> ain't all. got time to cook. Yeah, man. why would we cook? We're yeah. just like cleaning and buying the good food. Like just cook. I mean, just go and. No, eat. you know what it is. Like, it's all better. The time. It's you know what it is. I think Cantonese people know how much trouble it is to cook good Cantonese yes. food. So we're just like, yo, let's just put it on someone it else, man. I'm going to go man. out to eat and pay someone else to do it because I understand how much trouble it is to it cook is. each dim sum dish. You got to chop the garlic, then you got to yeah. chop the mince. It's like, man, just thing. prepping the food. That takes, takes hours. takes half the day just to prep the food. You know, yeah, you got to marinate true. it. You got to cook the yeah. soup. You know, it's just a whole day of cooking. If it, you it, don't prepare, it's not going to taste good. Honestly, it's like, especially even making your own gong chong as simple as it is, it's so much work. You might as well just go get the guai fei guy yeah. and get extra extra gong chong. Yep. Um, people in that are Cantonese call everybody outside of Guangdong a northerner, even though they are probably from other parts of southern China. Like basically anybody that's not Cantonese is a northerner. Is that from a the perception? You, that's a people- stereotype. I, I'm not good with uh, directions. I am a directionally yeah, yeah. challenged. <laughs> that, yeah. You would say that but- that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I. it is true because sometimes, Andrew, you'll talk to Canto, like really Canto people, they're like, oh, they're a lot. 
Oh, and you're like, but okay. you're like, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I, I've true. been to the northern China. They don't eat that much. It's, it's either, yeah, it's they're like just thinking said. like mm, anywhere outside of that yeah. zone is northern. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. kind of if like you're not Cantonese. You're a northerner. That's, yeah. that's what it, they call them. It's kind of like when people say, oh, are you Mandarin or Cantonese? But it's like those aren't really directions like Cantonese. Yes, more southern. But Mandarin can be Sichuan. It could be Shanghai. It could be northern China. But I think when people say Mandarin, they're referring to a northerner but it is true that anywhere outside of Guangdong like even once you get to Guangxi they're more likely to use peppers because even in like mm. Gui, they have that uh, Guizhou Latu or mm. Guailam Latu yeah. uh, anyway what do you think about calling everybody Lang Zai Lang Lei even if they're not good looking naturally yeah guy, I always call them Lang Zai Lang Lei but is that make, kind of a lie make them happy isn't yeah. it Gong Mo that's capping that's capping right Gong what Mo what capping Capping, you know what capping no. is? When oh, you, in, that's what... in America, you say that's cap. It's like gong dai wa. Oh, gong dai wa. So it's isn't okay. that you no, see no, somebody no, who's no, not a lang zai no, or no, not no, a lang no, and you call really, them that? It's like, gong dai wa. No, no, no. Oh my no, god. No, it's, it's kind of like just a in English term. You call someone like a bro or sis, just like it's a slang. You're saying that's but, not but, your bro. It's not your sis. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I but don't it, know, man. But it's also no. when they're very not attractive. You're like, wow, how lang lei wa yi ge. Wow, how lang zai yi zai lang zai de wa. That's that's no, no, no! I ain't gonna talk I, hey, like that. I ain't gonna cap, but Cantos do be capping though. When it comes to that, <laughs> come hang. Hey, hey, no, no, no! Oh, that just goes. Lei that lei just goes to show you how much Cantos love the money, because they'll say anything yes. to serve you. To oh, Lang Dai, Lang Loi. Oh, yeah, yeah buy this, buy that. Yeah. No, there's this famous scene in uh, Shulam Tukau, yes. right? Remember when the girl looks yes. like super ugly, making the Tung Yo Bing, yep. and then all of a sudden he's like, ah. Come lang. Yeah, <laughs> when they say that, it's so funny. That's the type of humor. Um, some people are saying, you know, there's just some interesting, um, like ways of talking. Late, uh, fanzo okay, like you know what I mean. Like okay, fanzo okay. It's like uh, it's just a very unique Cantonese language trait. You know what I mean? Like instead of like replacing like 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 ta hui jia le with the L in Mandarin, it's like. Okay, so they moved uh, to a, like a Z sound and then they moved it into the middle of the sentence. Basically, if you write out spoken Cantonese, it does look different than well, written. Right. Yeah, Cantonese is one of the hardest like languages to speak and like learn. Right, if you didn't grow up with it, right? There's so many tones in the Cantonese yeah, language. I think there's like it. nine tones. Right. You say a little off, it's yeah. totally something else. Or, or like, a like Like, there's like a poem where like oh, the mi-sai. sound is like, like there's like, te- like a bunch of different words, but they all sound the same. Yeah. In Cantonese. Like what? Like lei. Lei is a good one. Lei, yeah. yeah there's lei. a hell of like lei. Lei is you also yeah. lei. What? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some people are saying ke gou zhuo di. Like, gou di? That, that doesn't make any sense in Mandarin because it would be like ta gao le yi dian. But then we oh. shortened yi dian into gou zhuo di. Oh, that's true. So basically this was just a list of, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, lei so. Lace was it? So so Are you stupid? No, yeah, yeah, you're silly. Yeah. <laughs> so the ga, the so so de, the day is like uh, also something that is not in Mandarin. It's only in spoken Cantonese, right? But then yeah. you can write it out like in a comic book format. Anyway, ultimately, guys, we didn't get to all the Canto stereotypes. What is your favorite unique trait about Cantos? Just to end off the video, what's your, my unique trait yeah. that we're so tuned. Yeah. What, what does that mean? We're, it means we're like stuck up, so arrogant. Yeah, like we, confidently we, arrogant. Yeah, yeah. we okay. fly. Yeah, like yeah. we like we got that swag. Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say like kind of like a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't pirate. know how to say like a pirate. It's like not a pirate, but you know what I mean. Yes, yeah, like swashbuckling. <laughs> pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what's your favorite trait? I think between the food and also I do think there is something cool that Cantos can go anywhere on earth and make something happen and build a community, build a Chinatown. Now maybe not all those Chinatowns are nice. They're not all like Japan towns, but let's be honest, like it takes a lot of guts and grit to go everywhere in the world yeah. and mm. make something like mm. that. That is uh, admirable on many levels. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, I would say that ATV likeness to go into any place and build something and build a community. Like we're talking about like Afghanistan or some environment that is like unbelievably harsh soil for like the plants to grow in those canto plants they can sprout to totally disregard every aspect of living a good life just to go somewhere <laughs> for business and get it's bread. crazy and, yeah. bi- and build like functioning economic yeah, systems. yeah. no what's your favorite part is it the food 
and I just think uh, our, our, our willingness and willpower to be successful, I think that's, you know, we do whatever it takes to, you know, accomplish mm-hmm. that. You know, we could devote our whole life to, you know, just trying to be as successful as possible. I think a lot of Cantonese people, at least for me and how I was, grow- you know, how I grew up, I think that's, you know, something that really makes us stand out. For sure. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. These were common Canto stereotypes. Like we said, they're not going to apply to everybody. No stereotypes apply to any group at 100%, but it's just something that's out there in the internet and the ether. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Check out Kiki's stuff. Check out Nelly's stuff. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace. Peace.